Well, I wanted to let you know that I am back from vacation, back in the office, and looking forward to uh, preaching uh, this week. We had a wonderful vacation. Sharon and I enjoyed it very much. I I tried as much as possible to unplug, as they say. I didn't check in. I didn't check email. I didn't. Uh, I, I I I literally, for the first time in as long as I can remember, I did not think about the church work. I didn't even think about my about this sermon coming up. Um, I try to totally um, refocus my mind away from uh, the th things of uh, the ministry. Um, I took a 800 page book and got through 500 pages. I didn't finish it. It's a, a, a wonderful biography of Alexander Hamilton. Um, so we, we really enjoyed it. We, we started by uh, staying at a bed and breakfast in Ephrata that we we've been at before, we we really like it. Um, and then we toured, then we toured, then we went to the coolest small town in America, Lidditz, and uh, enjoyed our time there. And then we went to a movie. Uh, hadn't been to a movie in like what eight months, maybe longer. I don't know. Uh, last time we were in a movie, but we went to the movies. Um, wasn't a very good movie, but nevertheless, it was a movie. So we enjoyed that, and then we headed to Cape May and spent some time in Cape May, New Jersey, at the beach. Um, had a very relaxing time there. Um, enjoyed it very much. Uh, after Cape May, we headed back this way. We stayed at a bed and breakfast in Lancaster. And uh, on Saturday, we went to Sight and Sound. Every time we go to Sight and Sound, I think they cannot do better than the last time. But once again, they they exceeded expectations. We went and saw Esther. It was fantastic, um, particularly the sets. The sets the sets just blow me away. Um, the engineering required and the attention to detail it's just it's fantastic. Uh, now it's funny after we after I had bought the tickets, which as you know are not cheap. Uh, the very next day after I had bought them, sometime back. Uh, the very next day, they announced that they were going to show it live on television. Um, but nevertheless, it's not the same as, as being there. And then this past Sunday, we went to uh, Coryville, where my daughter Jackie, of course, lives. And David, uh, he's a pastor in Coryville. And we got to go to church with the grandkids. And I got to sit in a pew. And uh, hear David's message. It was excellent. Uh, we really enjoyed it. Um, the service and, and our time there. Uh, but now we're back. And I was back in the office yesterday and and uh, just wanted you to know that uh, um, I'm back in contact. If you have a, a need, a prayer request, let me know. Um, but we did enjoy our time and grateful that God allowed us to to get away. Now I want to squelch a rumor. As you know, I've, been, I've had, we've had house guests. Uh, Jeff and Laurie have been staying with us for well, they've been there about three weeks, I guess, give or take. Now, they are leaving tomorrow morning and will Monday fly out uh, from uh, Charlotte to Raleigh uh, to uh, Bosnia. But I just want you to know, it, it just so happened that while we had house, house guests, I was gone for most of the time, me and Sharon on vacation. That was just a, a happy coincidence. Um, no truth to the rumor that that's why I took vacation, because I had to share my house with people. I do want to thank Caleb um, for preaching in my absence the last two weeks, uh, for uh, doing the work of the ministry in my absence. Um, uh, while I was gone, Sunday school resumed and kids club and youth group. And uh, from what I hear from everybody, it went, it went well. And I appreciate uh, that. And those who are teaching, uh, junior church has been going great uh, outside, um, under the pavilion. So we're trying to get back as much as possible to, uh, normal ministry. And, uh, I do again, thank everybody, uh, who's helping with that and particularly Caleb for the last two weeks. I would encourage you, of course, to, uh, this week read, uh, the book of second Thessalonians. I will start, uh, preaching from 2 Thessalonians this Sunday. It's only three chapters. You can read it very quickly. Uh, I would encourage you to read all three chapters, but particularly chapter one, 
Um, I will, Lord willing, be sending out a Bible study uh, later tonight uh, or this afternoon um, to help you as you look at Second Thessalonians chapter one. That is my that will be my text. I would encourage you to prayerfully read through it. Ask the Lord to prepare your heart for His Word preached on this Sunday. As as again as we uh, continue this idea of uh, uh, awaiting His arrival, uh, looking for Christ's return. Uh, in First Thessalonians, and now uh, in Second Thessalonians. I would also like to thank you for your faithful support of Community Bible Church. Um, if there's one thing in this experience that has just totally blown me away is how faithful you have been to support sacrificially uh, the ministry of Community Bible Church. Um, year to date, um, our offerings have been uh, above average. They've been uh, above budget. Um, if, if you had told me uh, in March that the offerings would be so consistent and so sufficient uh, during this uh, difficult ordeal, I would not have believed you. Um, but I, I, I've just been blown away by... God's provision uh, of community Bible for community Bible church. Um, God, you know, God uh, uses ends, uh, uses means to accomplish his ends. And uh, uh, his end, of course, is that the ministry um, uh, is funded. And the means to that end is you. And people have been giving and uh I, honestly, I'm, I'm just so grateful and so thankful and just blown away by by how um, uh, good the offerings have been. So thank you for that. I would like to close with uh, making one more uh, announcement here, and it, it, it refers to uh, wearing masks uh, at the church and, and keeping our masks on during the service. Now, first I tell you, as a private individual, speaking as a as a private citizen, uh, I'm skeptical skeptical about the effectiveness of wearing a mask. There doesn't seem to be settled science on it. Um, they've been all over the map about it. First, they told us not to. Then they told us that wearing one might even make us more prone because of people wearing them improperly or or using their hands to adjust them and and whatever. Um, uh, you know, then it tells us that, that most masks that people wear aren't really effective. Um, and a lot of states are not requiring it. Um, so I don't think there's any settled science on it. I, I personally am skeptical. Um, but nevertheless, uh, we've been asked as citizens of the great commonwealth of Pennsylvania to wear a mask in public. Uh, if left to my own, I probably would not. I do wear one out in public, number one, in obedience to the governing authorities, as Romans 13 commands us, and number two, to, to make other people feel comfortable. I don't, I don't particularly, you know, take any pleasure in somebody being uh, uncomfortable around me or, or, or whatever. So I, I do, I comply. Now I've been also did my whole Christian experience. I've been, I've been saved since I was five years old and I've read the Bible through many times, but I'm just being honest with you. I, there's never been a particular passage in which I have struggled over more is Romans 13 in this current environment. As you know, Romans 13 is the, the chapter about human authority, human government, and God, who is our authority, um, giving authority to civil authorities. Uh, all authorities derive from God, but he uses um, the government. And I honestly, every week I struggle with the implications of that in this present environment. Um but nevertheless, because of that, uh, I remain convinced that if we're being asked to wear a mask in public, then we should wear an, a mask in public. Um, I don't, again, I don't, I don't like it. In fact, just the opposite. I'm a flag-waving, constitutional-believing, 
I'm a proud American who doesn't like to be told what to do. Amen. But I'm also a Christian. And I try to live in obedience to the word of God. And for now, that requires me to wear a mask in public. Now, I credit our governor with the fact that he has never singled out churches. In fact, he has publicly stated that uh, churches can do what they want. That's not the issue. The issue is, as private citizens, he's asked us to wear it in, in, in public places, including indoors. Now, this problem has been exasperated, of course, by what's going on in California. If you know the battles uh, between religious liberty and, and the state of California, which have been going on for a long time, this has only uh, made it more visible. But because of what's going on in California, um, it's made it actually harder, I feel, on, on other states. Um, and particularly, I'm talking about Governor Newsom's requirement that churches you know, not meet indoors and that they cannot sing or chant during worship services. Uh, and as you know, um, uh, John MacArthur, Pastor John MacArthur, Grace Community Church, has uh, uh, publicly stated he's not his this, his church is not going to do that, and they've been having three thousand people uh, without masks. Was, I mean, I, I'm assuming some wear masks, but there's no requirement to wear masks. Three thousand people every Sunday in his auditorium, and they're singing like they always sing and everything normal, in spite of the governor's mandates that they not meet inside and that they not sing. Even outside, I don't think they're supposed to sing. Um, and John and Pastor MacArthur has, you know, been on the news. He's been on, you've probably seen him on some news programs. I've heard him on several podcasts. Uh, he's very um, adamant that he is going to obey what he believes is God rather than, than man and go ahead and, and do these things. Now, that's California. That's his church. That's his problem. I don't live in California. Um, now, I love John MacArthur. I want to make this clear. I I've said this often. I'm a pastor because of my pastor, Dr. Charles Keene. He's the only pastor I've ever had. Um, Dr. Charles Keene led my dad to the Lord when I was five, and my dad led me to the Lord a year later. Uh, I grew up under Dr. Keene's ministry. Um, from the age of five to the age of 28, I went to his church. I was a member of, of uh, the church that Dr. Keene pastored. Um, after uh, I graduated from college, I, I worked for him. He was my mentor for seven years before I went into uh, full-time pastorate. Uh, so I'm a pastor because of my pastor, Dr. Charles Keene. But I'm the type of pastor that I am because of Pastor John MacArthur. I won't deny that. Um, the, the way I preach has been influenced by Dr. John MacArthur. My philosophy of ministry um, has been influenced by Dr. John MacArthur. I've read many of his books. I've listened to countless sermons by Dr. MacArthur. I love Dr. MacArthur. I don't pastor Dr. MacArthur's church. I don't live where Dr. MacArthur lives. I leave that between him and the Lord and the Holy Spirit. I live in the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and here I'm simply being asked to wear a mask to church. They, the, our governor has not told us we can't worship. He has not told us we can't sing. And again, as churches, he's not given us any specific requirements, but he's asked us as citizens to wear a mask. And I, I, I cannot in good conscience um, disobey scripture and say, well, it doesn't matter. You don't have to wear a mask when you come to church. I wish I could, and maybe, maybe eventually, <laughs> you know, I'll change my mind. But for now, I, I maintain that, uh, in obedience to the governing authorities, that we should wear a mask to church out of consideration for others and out of obedience to Christ. Um, so we maintain that, uh, Pray that, that, that it won't last much longer. Um, pray that um, there will be some wisdom and maybe even common sense applied to this situation. Um, we're to pray for those in authority that we that we can lead a quiet and peaceful life, as it says in First Timothy. Um, so 
pray for our governor. I pray for our um, legislators. Pray for our county commissioners. Uh, pray for our borough officials, our township officials. Um, pray first of all, if, if they're not believers, that they would be saved. Um, pray for their salvation. Um, and then pray that they would uh, uh, have wisdom in, in leading us through this. And pray for an end to this. I mean, I know you are. Um, even so, come Lord Jesus, <laughs> maybe it might be the way to end it. I don't know. Um, but uh, we will continue to, uh, and this is not a popular, believe me, this has been a difficult time on pastors. Uh, and and, uh, and this is not a popular uh, opinion, but nevertheless, uh, I, I'm going to ask that um, if your health allows, uh, if you're able to wear a mask uh, to church. Um, but as I said, as we saw in First and Second Thessalonians, Jesus is coming. I don't know when, but I will join the Apostle John in his prayer. Uh, even so, come Lord Jesus.